welcome to Learning Music with Pat. Within the last week or two, I've had quite a few people come to me and talk to me about their Indian flutes, the fact that they love them, they're learning how to play them, they're buying them on the internet, they're really very fond of them. And so I thought, what a great time to start a class on Indian flutes. I have flutes here from India, I have them from Native American Indians, and uh, I have them from Morocco, from Peru, various sources. So some of the flutes are Native American flutes, and those are the flutes that most people are talking to me about. But I also have flutes from India itself, and some Indian flutes from other countries. So I thought this would be a good time to show them and to explain a little bit about them, because they are wonderful flutes and I can understand why people love them because there's a lot to love about them. I think the best thing I can say about Indian flutes and why I like them so much is the purity of their tone. They have an excellent, wonderful tone, and the wind instruments are great because you can pick them up and you can play them. You don't have to worry about reeds, rods, uh, getting keys jammed, getting pads that need to be replaced, getting reeds that are cracked so you have to replace them because they have to be moist, they have to vibrate. There are a lot of complicating factors about other kinds of, of uh, woodwind instruments. But with the wind flute, you just pick them up and you play them. And there's a lot to say about that. And they can play some very complicated music. So I'm going to start off by showing you a flute that I had here, a couple of flutes I've had here before that are Native American flutes. So let me start with the Lakota flute. This is a Lakota flute, and it's made out of cedar, and it is a genuine flute. And the way that they make them is that they make them in two halves, and then they fuse the two halves together. If you look at this flute, now this you can't do, but I can show you. You can feel the ridges. If you were to put your finger in the bottom of it, you could feel the ridges on, in the flute itself. When they take these pieces, they carve ridges in the wood, and then they fuse them together. They do such a good job that you don't even notice where the seam is. I can feel a seam in some places, but if it weren't for my being able to feel it, I probably wouldn't even tell you exactly where it was. These flutes have just a little hole to blow into, and they have a bird symbol or some other kind of symbol which goes over a little place which if it were a recorder we would call the labium. It's like a little notched out place and that fixes the pitch of the instrument. They play a pentatonic scale. That uh, bird symbol is tied with leather strips and they're not knotted, they're just tied. And I've never, in the years I've had this instrument, I've had it for quite a few years, I have never had to have the uh, leather tendrils retied. They've always remained very, very tight. And I think that um, somebody told me that they get them very, very cold. I don't know whether they put them in a cold room or what they do, put cold water on them, whatever, and it shrinks the leather, and so they hold their tightness. So I'm going to play, this is a pentatonic scale. The scales, and I'll review those today with you as well. The pentatonic scale is an Indian scale. It does not uh, sound like the traditional Western or European scales. a beautiful tone and that's the pentatonic scale. The other one I want to show you is one I've had here as well. My brother-in-law made it. Now my brother-in-law can carve anything. He's just a genius in terms of carving. He does very, very beautiful work. In fact, the cross that I'm wearing is the first cross that he ever made. His name is Howard Pelletier. And I want to give him full credit for this. This instrument is an Indian instrument which he personally made. It's carved out of butternut wood. And he made his own little symbol, which is, is an Indian symbol, and used cord to tie it together over that notch, which would be the labium. And it plays the pentatonic scale just like the other one does. It's a little weaker tone, but the, uh, the tones actually match. I've had this here before. 
Um, and it's a very interesting instrument. Take a look at the little hole that you blow into, a very, very tiny hole. And if I were to put my fingers up, I can feel the ridges, which he also carved in two pieces and fused them together. And once again, it's been fused in such a way that you would never know where the, uh, where the fuse is. But there is a, a little tiny ridge, which you can feel occasionally. So this is uh, the other one. Uh, which is Native American, but made by my brother-in-law. Um, this is an instrument I don't believe I've ever had here. It's called, it's kind of an Indian flute. It's called a ney, N-E-Y, and it's also an end-blown flute. If you look at it carefully, there are no tone holes, and there's no thumb hole in the back. It's wrapped up with cane. Cane is the kind of wood that they actually make reeds from, clarinet reeds, saxophone reeds, and it's called an end-blown flute. Reason is I pull this top out carefully, and if I were to play it, I haven't quite mastered it, so I, I won't, but you blow across this hole. There's an open hole there, and you blow across it, and the air catches in this little notch there, and it produces a tone. Now, if you're skilled at it, you can produce more than one tone. You can produce several tones just by blowing across it a little bit like you would, say, if you were blowing across a soda bottle, and you just hold it, and you hold it down and blow it, and then it creates the different sounds. This one was made probably in Turkey, these instruments are used in the, in the Middle East, in the, I should say, the Mediterranean area. And uh, it was used in Egypt, Turkey, and, and uh, nations that are around that area of the Mediterranean. So this is not a common instrument. It's not rare, but you're going to find almost no one has one. So I put it together again carefully, because you can get this stuck. So I just put it down a little bit. And I want to show you some other end-blown flutes. Here's one, and in this case, you do not have a hole. But what you have is it's blocked in, but you have a little slot. I don't know if you can catch that right at the end. So it's filled in except for that slot. It is open. It's open at the other end. And then you have what would be the labium. And you just put it to your mouth and you blow across it like you would a soda can. And you get various tones. And that's the way you do an end-blown flute. There, I have several of them, so I want to show you a couple more. This flute is from Morocco. It's also an end-blown. Look at the designs on it. It's just a very nice-looking flute. I imagine that all those designs are sim uh, symbols of something. And here you have the, the uh, area where you would blow across, blocked up, except for this little notch, this little place. It acts like a mouthpiece. And then you have right here what would act like the labium. And I'll try this one. They get different kinds of flutes. Now, there is a man who comes up in this area about once a year in October. And he makes and he plays uh, flutes, uh, Indian flutes. And he uh, sells Peruvian flutes. I have a group of them I'm going to be showing you. And uh, he is an Indian uh, that lives in Peru. And he sells CDs. Uh, he plays, uh, he has a very, very expensive, several hundred dollar flute that's an end blown flute. And he plays it, and he plays absolutely beautiful music on it. The tone is just wonderful. I've been trying to find an American uh, instrument that kind of mimics that tone, because I'd like to use it for solos. I haven't found anything yet. But when you know how to play one of these, the tone is just magnificent. This is Moroccan. Here's another one. Quite attractive to look at. Very large finger holes, and there's quite a stretch to those finger holes. And there is a tone hole in the back. Some of these have tone holes, and some of them don't. And here it is, an end-blown flute. 
instead of being blocked up, there's an open hole here, and then you have a notch, and you blow across it, and you get tones that way, and you finger them, and use your tone hole to help with the pitch. It's a skill to be able to play these. I'm still learning how. This one here is another Moroccan. This one won't play because there is a defect in the mouthpiece, in the, the place that you blow across. I can see it, but there's no way I'm going to be able to fix it. But here you have that notch. It's, it's filled in, the hole's filled in, and you do have that notch, but it's been incorrectly cut. And then you have the labium. These instruments are very, very nice to play once you learn to get the hang of it. So those are the end blown flutes. Now I want to show you some fifes. This is an American fife. It plays like a flute. It fingers like a recorder. If you put your hand on the uh, finger holes, there's no tone hole in the back. Then you lift it up, and this is just the mouthpiece is or just a plain round hole. It's a plain round hole and you blow across it like you do a soda bottle and it does play. I don't know if I can make it today, but... Not so good on the octaves, but you can get them. This is a fife and the way that you know a fife is that you have a round hole to blow into, uh, or to blow across, and it's flat with the instrument. There's no special notches, it's not raised, it's just a round hole and you blow across it flat with the instrument. Let me show you a couple more. A friend of mine gave me this, it comes from Massachusetts, Sturbridge Village. It is also a fife and it has the round hole that you blow in and you just hold it up like a flute, like you're playing a flute, blowing across that hole and getting your tone that way. This one plays in the key of E flat. I don't know if I'll have any luck with it or not, but we'll try it. It doesn't play as clearly, but it does play. And I have used it some. Now, I want to get into instruments from India, actually from India. This is an instrument, it has a fipple-like mouthpiece. It looks like a fipple mouthpiece like the recorders have, and it's in the key of C. The reason I know that is that there's a big C painted on its mouthpiece. I've never seen that before in any instrument. Uh, this is a little notch, it acts like a labium. This comes from India itself, and it does play, I assume, that it's made for tourists to come over because it's not all that expensive and it has written in English, made in India. So if you ever take a trip to India, I think you could get a group of these things, bring them back and prove that they're an Indian instrument. But it's obvious due to the insignias and the design on it. It actually plays quite well. I have several of them. Let me try this. It's a very nice flute. I have several of them and I really like it. And I can play it in an orchestra because it pitches so well. It's not loud, but it has a very nice soft tone. This one comes from India. Here's one that also comes from India and this is just so unusual. Look at the design. If you can catch it. If you look at the tone holes, you will find that there are little petals around them. They're designed so that the tone holes are actually the centerpiece of a flower. And there's a flower with the, with the little petals surrounding each one of them. But the tone holes are very large. It's hard to play. Look at this in the back. Just flowers, hand-carved, all the way down the instrument. I hope that you can see that. It's very attractive, very nice, and a lot of, of I think, labor-intensive work went into that. You have a fipple mouthpiece, and you have the labium, 
you have very large tone holes, larger than most instruments would have, and it plays just like a regular recorder would play, made in India. It's a very lovely instrument. I do seem to collect them. Now, what I want to show you now is a group of Peruvian flutes. These are, are flutes that are handmade. They're Indian flutes coming from Peru. And they have a lot of really nice colors. And I kind of collected them because they're really beautiful to look at. And you can play them. Some of them play quite well. Some of them don't. It's kind of catch as catch can. When you buy them, you're not allowed to play them to see how they work because have, they have to go in your mouth. And if it's in your mouth, you more or less have to buy it. But this is a red one. I've actually done solo work on this one. And it's very pretty and very attractive. It has its own Indian designs. There's no tone hole in the back. Some of these Peruvian flutes have tone holes in them, and some of them don't. This one does not. So I'm going to... Um, Take a crack at this. This instrument does have a problem in that there is a crack developing by the mouthpiece. So I can't use it for solo work anymore because the more I play it, and of course as you blow into it, you have warm air. And what's going to happen is it's going to make the split get larger. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a scale out of it. not playing well because of that crack because what I've got is air escaping out of it and it shouldn't be but it is but nonetheless when I first got it it played well I did solos with it and everybody loved it because they loved the color here's a purple one this purple one has a tone hole and it's in an unnatural position because your hand has got to be playing down here and your thumb, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to twist around. Your thumb has got to be above where your index finger is. And that's an unnatural way to hold it. Usually, if you're holding a soda can, then your hand is like this, and the, the index finger is opposite the opposed thumb. And, but you can't, when you're playing one of these, you have to push your thumb up higher than is natural, which makes it difficult to play. But it's a very, very beautiful instrument. I love the color. And it has the same recorder-like mouthpiece with the labium. And it is a Peruvian Indian flute. Let me show you three more that I have. This one here is black. It does not have a tone hole in the back, but it's built the same way. And um, the, the uh, finger holes seem low on it. There's quite a distance between the top finger and where the mouthpiece is. That is not the usual way, but this is the way that it's made. It's also a Peruvian Indian flute. They're actually not very expensive. So some of them play well, some of them don't. This was one, it's also a Peruvian flute, but it came with a leather, or I'm sorry, a cloth kind of uh, um, neck piece. Now what you do with that, a strap, neck strap, and you put it on. You can put the neck strap on over your head, and it has, this is just a design thing with these little, these little furry balls. There is a tone hole quite uh, high up for where your fingers are. Here again, you put your finger, uh, the top index finger on this hole, that tone hole is up quite a bit. They're not, but it's more comfortable than the other one. And you put your, whoops, put your fingers on and you can play. And uh, they do play, some of them fairly well, and some of them don't. of a 
nice tone, a nice soft tone to it. You'll find with these little instruments that are less expensive, the higher you go, the flatter the notes come. So when you're playing, if you're trying to play an upper register with it, the notes are not going to be quite in pitch. The lower notes are usually quite well in pitch and sound pretty good. So if you're actually playing in a band, and I do take these in once in a while to play with a band, uh, I have to be careful what register I'm playing on, and I write down in advance what key it seems to be in, because some of these instruments are not quite in pitch with themselves. So the standards that we have for pitching for an orchestra or band, these little flutes which are, are just plain and simple may not uh, meet those standards. They may not be able to be tuned to A440 or anything that an orchestra would have. But a lot of people play them and they love them and they sound good and there's a lot you can do with them and sometimes I just take them in and play them anyway. They're beautiful and here again another flower around one of the tone holes. Here's another little green one, a different shade. It also has a tone hole in the back. You don't have any uh, neck straps or anything like that. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, notes, the note, whoops, there is a tone hole here. So here again, it's up a little bit too high for what most people would play. So these are the Peruvian flutes. You can get a lot more expensive ones, uh, but these are the ones that they sell in festivals and so forth, and they are attractive. Now, I also brought in my piccolo. It's a different type of hole that you blow through. The difference between a flute and a piccolo and these other instruments here is that the tone hole, it is that circle that you get, that you blow across, but it's raised up. The flute's the same way. It, it's raised up. There's a little place here, and you put that underneath your lip. And uh, it raises the whole thing up. So the difference between these is that a lot of these tone holes and, and mouthpieces are flat holes like the fifes. They're right next to the, uh, are right flat with the instrument, but with a flute or a piccolo, they're raised up. So uh, you've seen some of these. I want to go over the scales once again. The pentatonic we've done. The chromatic, all of these other instruments will play a chromatic scale and a chromatic, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'll start with a diatonic scale, which goes up step by step by step. That's a diatonic scale, and you can get them on almost any instrument except for the Indian uh, flutes, which go on the pentatonic scale, or some of the end-blown flutes that don't have all of the notes. But any other instrument, including the Peruvian flutes, the American flutes, and any of the other normal instruments, will go one step at a time. The chromatic scales are when you go up a half a step at a time, so... You can do that on some of the other instruments by half holding them. But you cannot do that with the Indian flute because the pentatonic scale does not allow you to do that. The uh, recorders have that same fipple mouthpiece as you're going to find with some of these other flutes. If you look at them and compare them, they're very much similar. They all have that, what would be the labium in the front. And uh, I know we're kind of running out of time here, but I just wanted you to see it. I love the Indian flutes. A lot of people love the Indian flutes. They play them. They're fun to play. You can play music with them, real music with them. And uh, if you want to ask me any questions, uh, don't forget to email me. That is the way to reach me. And if you want an immediate answer, give me your name and your telephone number, and I can call you back with an answer to your question so you won't have to wait uh, until a show is aired before you receive an answer. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and please join me next time.